guys, Jesse here. So this is the fourth iteration of the Fold series from Samsung. I've been using it for roughly the past month and it's just really gotten me thinking about the state of foldables and where this form factor is going. Because when we get a new form factor like a foldable phone, we expect there to be a ton of innovation and change in the beginning as companies figure out what's working, what's not, and what people really want out of a foldable phone. But then as more versions pass by, we get closer and closer to what I'm gonna call the end game, where the form factor has pretty much gotten as good as it's gonna get. And then from that point forward, we're just gonna see minor spec bumps every year. Now we're undoubtedly already there with more traditional smartphones, but my question now is, are we there with foldables? Because ever since the Fold 2, the updates have been getting more and more iterative, and never has that been more true than with this version of the Fold. But before we get into it, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Skillshare. So if you haven't heard about Skillshare yet, I don't know where you've been, but it is the online learning community where there are thousands of classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. And in fact, I've been a longtime user of Skillshare since way before they reached out for the sponsorship. And a lot of the skills that I use for this YouTube channel every single day, I learned on Skillshare. And one of my favorite courses was by the man himself, MKBHD, on YouTube success, where he goes through start to finish on how he produces a YouTube video. And it's not just for people trying to become YouTubers, of course. There are thousands of courses with everything from mastering productivity with Thomas Frank to the basics of singing with Gabriel. So whether you're interested in making a career pivot or trying to level up in your current role, Skillshare has got you covered. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested, the first 1,000 people to use that link in my description box below are going to get their first month of Skillshare free. Seriously guys, check them out. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So I guess a good place to start with this is by going over what they changed in this year's model, cause the list is pretty short. So of course we've got those updated specs with that new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, slightly smaller bezels on both displays, a slightly wider cover display by three millimeters, an updated under display selfie camera, and I think most importantly, a slightly thinner, lighter, and shorter build. And I think that weight reduction has actually had a pretty big impact on using this day to day in a really good way. And I'm especially impressed that they've been able to do that while even adding to the durability apparently with a stronger aluminum frame and keeping that IPX8 water resistance. Now it still is pretty heavy compared to other phones, but it's at least in the same ballpark now. Like the iPhone 13 Pro Max is not a light phone either at 240-ish grams, but this one's only about 20 grams heavier at 260-ish. And I think the biggest difference that the weight has made for me is that if I'm wearing joggers or other athletic pants, I no longer feel like it's pulling my pants down when it's in my pocket. So really happy about that. But otherwise, physically, you might have a difficult time telling the difference between this and the previous generation. Besides maybe this new gray green colorway, which by the way, I think is pretty sick. The only real changes were these slightly flatter edges, which are now glossy instead of matte, which also has the weird side effect of making it a little bit harder to open. Like you really got to get your fingers in there but it's not that big of a deal. And the hinge also just pokes out a little bit less, which I actually thought was pretty noticeable and makes the phone feel a lot less clunky to hold in the hand. And that's pretty much it, which notably means that the camera bump area hasn't really changed at all since last year. And I kind of see this as the identifying feature of a phone, so it feels really weird for any company that's not Apple to keep this the same year over year. And it feels especially weird on a line that's really defined by innovation and change. And stuff like that, that makes me wonder about the state of foldables and where this form factor is going. Like it's still twice the thickness of a normal phone. Although I will say that aspect is actually I think easier than most people would think to get used to. But keeping in line with the theme of minor upgrades on this phone, we've got slightly smaller bezels on the inside and outside screens, which I actually did find pretty noticeable, but I still find the bezels on the front screen at least to be a little bit too thick. Like because the size of the display is on the lower end, the screen to body ratio on the front feels a little bit low. Like even though the main display has just as thick bezels, maybe even a little bit thicker, it feels fine because the actual screen is a lot larger. As far as the actual quality of the screens though, as usual with Samsung, it's pretty much the best of the best. Colors, contrast, and brightness are all really great. And with the 120 Hertz, I promise you are gonna love the way that these screens look. I think it would be nice if the main display got a little bit brighter, but it's a very minor complaint and still very usable outdoors. And just using this main display, man, it's, 
it's an experience. Like I've messed around with folds in the past before, but still to this day, every time I open this up and just start using it, I just can't help but appreciate how good it looks. And this year, to help even more with that, they've got a much more well-hidden under-display selfie camera that's actually surprisingly well-hidden. Like last year, they also had the under-display selfie camera, but the pixel density over it was just way too low in my opinion, and I found it a lot more distracting than just having a regular hole punch there, and still with the downside of destroying the camera quality. Now this year, the camera quality hasn't really gotten that much better, but at least now it looks a lot nicer and more well hidden. And I find that if I'm focusing on the content on the screen, I can almost forget that it's there. And having such a large screen with such a high screen to body ratio is such an immersive experience that is really, I think, unmatched on pretty much any other device. Like, obviously I have other devices that have larger screens like the iPad behind me, but they also have thicker bezels. And the combination of the large screen with the thin bezels makes it feel like you're looking into the window of another world and it's really an experience that you just can't really get on any other device right now. Also, I think the large screen makes this pretty much the best gaming smartphone out there if the game supports the aspect ratio. I think particularly games that have on-screen controls like joysticks and that kind of thing really benefit from the extra screen real estate because you just get so much more space for the actual content that's not covered up by the controls. What's a little bit unfortunate though is that if you're holding the device landscape like you usually would be if you're playing a game, the speakers are pretty easy to block because both of them are on the same side of the device. And the speaker quality is just okay. They don't get quite as loud as the iPhones, but for smartphone speakers, they are passable. Now back to the screen, certain apps are really well optimized for the larger screen and basically give you a tablet version of the app. And for those apps, I really love using them on this phone and it's an awesome experience. But I think the issue is that most apps are not optimized in that way and you either get black bars on both sides or just like before, you can force any app into full screen, but then the scaling might be off and it just feels like not the most polished experience, which when you're spending $1,800 on a phone is not what you want. And of course, you can also still do split view with up to three different apps at a time for maximum productivity. But I personally found this to be of limited use just because usually when you're doing production things you need to type and the keyboard takes up about half the screen and also again a lot of apps just don't support this either but if you do want to use this feature it's actually a lot easier to get into this mode than before now with the new dock you can access it anytime by swiping up from the bottom and on the left side you've got your apps on your home screen dock and on the right you've got your two most recently used apps and you can access the rest of your apps by tapping that grid icon on the bottom left now like I said I haven't personally really been using split view that much but the dock is really nice to just have have there for everyday use. And I think this is a perfect example of Samsung really taking advantage of the extra screen size in a very useful way. Now, one of the things that I think a lot of people are really worried about when they see this phone is the crease. And yes, it's still definitely there. And if you're looking at it, you can definitely notice it. But I found that if you have content on the screen and you're actually paying attention to the content, the crease really does just disappear. I think the thing that bothered me a little bit more though was that the two halves of the phones don't get completely flat. Like they're just at ever so slightly different angles and I found it to be pretty distracting in certain situations. Also, just like last year, this has S Pen support with the Fold Edition S Pen and it works as well as you would expect it to latency wise and everything. I think Samsung has gotten that figured out a long time ago with the Note series, but I just don't think it's as well integrated as the Note series or I guess now the S22 Ultra where you can just store the pen in the phone. This year they give you a case or rather you can buy a case that has a pen holder on it, but I just really don't like the way that they did it. Like one, I just don't like the fact that you need a case to store the pen in the first place because I just don't like cases on regular phones, but that goes doubly true for this phone because it's already so thick and adding a case to it just blows it over the top for me. And two, the pen stores on the back of the phone, which further increases the thickness and makes it so that you lose wireless charging. Overall, I think it's a pretty clumsy implementation, but if you know that those limitations are there and you're okay with it, 
it's there for you. Now, moving on to the cover display, I really don't use this unless I absolutely have to. It just feels really, really small and cramped. Like the diagonal is 6.2 inches, which is pretty large, but it's just so narrow. It's got a super skinny 23.1 by 9 aspect ratio, which makes doing pretty much anything on the screen feel really cramped, especially typing. I make a ton of typos on here. And I would just really love to see them make this at least 21 by 9, because then at least it'd be good for watching movies. And battery life wise, it's got the same 4400 milliamp hour cell as last year, which makes it just okay. Like, I think you're definitely going to need to charge before the end of the day, but I think for a device like this, I can give it a pass because powering this enormous 7.6 inch display probably takes a lot of juice. And last but not least, let's talk about the cameras. And keeping with the theme of this phone, not much has changed from last year. With the main upgrades being a 3x telephoto zoom versus 2 on last year's, and a 50 megapixel main sensor versus 12 on last year's. And I know that sounds like a lot, but in my experience, that jump and resolution on such a small sensor size just doesn't really make all that big of a difference. And it performs pretty much how you would expect a Samsung smartphone to perform nowadays, which is to say good, but definitely has a look to it. Whether you love it or hate it, Samsung smartphone cameras just have a certain look to them that they've gotten pretty famous for over the past couple of years where they're just a little bit heavier on the processing than other smartphone manufacturers, particularly with the sharpness, contrast, and saturation. And I think Technically speaking, these are really great cameras, but it just comes down to whether or not you're a fan of that look. But even though these cameras are good, it's just kind of a shame that these aren't the best that Samsung has to offer. They don't get any of those crazy 50 times, 100 times telephoto zooms that you get on Samsung's other flagship smartphones. And it just feels kind of bad when you're spending this much money on a smartphone and you're not getting the best that they have to offer. But one of the good things about this kind of form factor though is that you basically have a built-in kickstand which comes in really handy for when you want to take a group photo and you actually want to be in it this has got you covered and also being able to take selfies with the main sensor and especially that ultra wide comes in really clutch definitely one of those things you're probably only going to use like three times the entire time you own this phone but definitely nice to have in a pinch okay so overall based on my pretty short experience of using this phone my thoughts on this form factor are pretty mixed on one hand basically having a tablet in your pocket available to you anytime is really nice and having all that extra screen size for gaming content consumption and productivity is really great but on the other hand this fold suffers from pretty much all the problems that i had with folds in the past the main one being app compatibility like i said earlier a lot of apps use the extra screen real estate really well and in those situations this is awesome but i would say the vast majority of apps don't. And you just end up getting really janky, unrefined experiences that aren't really fitting of an $1,800 phone. And the worst part is that this solution isn't really up to Samsung. It's up to all of those individual app developers to really make versions of their app for this phone, which I just don't really see happening anytime soon. And that's why I would really love to see at least one of these screens be a more normal aspect ratio so that it could just plug and play into different apps. But I think if you know about those shortcomings and you're okay with them, then this really is something special. Anyways, that's it for this one. I definitely will be spending some more time with this phone and releasing more videos about it as I get to spend more time with it. So definitely make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. That notification bell is very important so you actually see it. But like if you liked it, sub if you loved it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.